Hello everyone. In today's lesson, we will join Patella as he calculates the volume of cylinders. Let's have a look. Look at all these shapes. What do they all have in common? I'm sure you can see that they all have a circular surface. They are all cylinders. Let's have a closer look at the characteristics of a cylinder. A cylinder is a solid that does not have all flat surfaces for faces, but a curved surface. Do you see that it still has two bases? But these bases are not polygons, but circles. The bases are also parallel to each other. There are two kinds of cylinders right cylinders and oblique cylinders. If you drop a straight line through the middle of the cylinder, that is, from the middle of one base to the middle of the other base, and it meets the bases at right angles, then the cylinder is a right cylinder. Otherwise, it is an oblique cylinder. We're only going to be working with right cylinders in this lesson. One other thing which the right cylinder has in common with the right prism is the formula for determining its volume. We know that the formula for finding the volume of a right prism is area of base times perpendicular height of the prism. We also know that the shape of the base in a cylinder is a circle. So to find the volume of a right cylinder, we must multiply the area of the circle by the perpendicular height of the cylinder. Do you remember what the area formula for a circle is? It is pi times the radius squared. So the volume of the cylinder is now equal to pi times the radius squared multiplied by the perpendicular height of the cylinder. Have you ever wondered how much toilet paper there is on a toilet roll? Let's see if we can use the formula for the volume of a cylinder to calculate the volume of toilet paper there is on a toilet roll. Through the middle of the roll, there's a cardboard cylindrical part that is hollow. The rest of the roll is made up of paper that is tightly wrapped around it. We have measured the toilet roll and we found that the diameter of the whole roll is 10,5 centimeters. The diameter of the hollow inside is 3,4 centimeters and the height of the roll is 10 centimeters. What would you do to solve this problem? Will it help to find the volume of the whole roll? Then what do we do about the empty hole inside the roll? Not a problem. We can subtract the volume of the hole from the volume of the whole toilet roll. So let's find the volume of the whole toilet roll. To do that, we use the formula for the volume of a cylinder. We know that the diameter of the whole roll is 10,5 centimeters. And to find the radius, we need to divide 10,5 by 2, which is equal to 5,25. And we also know that the height of the roll is 10 centimeters. Now substituting these values into our formula, we get pi, which is rounded off to 3,143, multiplied by our radius, which was 5,25 centimeters, squared, multiplied by our perpendicular height, which was 10 centimeters, which is equal to 3,143 multiplied by 
27,56 centimeters squared multiplied by 10 centimeters, which is equal to 866,21 centimeters cubed. Now, we still need to find the volume of the cylindrical hole through the row. Again, we can use the formula for the area of a circle times the height of the cylinder. For this part of the problem, we use the diameter of the small circle, which is 3,4 centimeters. So, to find the radius, we say radius is equal to 3,4 divided by 2, which is equal to 1,7. So now we have pi, which is rounded off to 3,143, times the radius, which is 1,7 centimeters, squared, times the height of our cylinder, which is 10 centimeters which is equal to 3,143 times 2,89 centimeters squared times 10 centimeters, which is equal to 90,83 cubic centimeters. Is this the answer that we're looking for? Not yet. Remember that we're looking for the volume of the part that is covered by paper on the row. What do we need to do? We need to subtract the volume of the inside hole from the volume of the whole cylinder. So we get 866,21 cubic centimeters minus 90,83 cubic centimeters. So we get 775,38 cubic centimeters. So the volume of just the paper on this toilet roll is about 775,38 cubic centimeters, which means that I can go to the toilet. Nah, just forget it. We'll need a whole new lesson for that one. Here's one more challenge for you. For this one, you will need to use what you know about the volume of cylinders and the volume of right rectangular prisms together. Here's a right rectangular prism with a cylindrical hole through it. Can you calculate the volume of this prism? In this problem, we're not given actual measurements. The letter symbols X, R, and S represent unknown values on this prism. We will need to use some algebra for this problem. Knowing the rules of algebra helps you in geometry problems as well. Where do you think we should start with this problem? Just like with the toilet roll, we will need to subtract the volume of the cylindrical hole through the middle from the volume of the right rectangular prism. So the volume of the right rectangular prism is equal to area of base, which is given by length times breadth times the height of the prism. If we take E, F, G, H to be the base, then we get the area of the base equal to X times X times the height of the prism which is given by S, which gives us X squared S. Now we're ready to find the volume 
of the whole. The volume of a right cylinder is equal to pi multiplied by the radius squared multiplied by the height of the cylinder, which is equal to pi multiplied by our radius, which is given by r squared multiplied by our height, which is given by s, which can be written as pi r squared s. So we have the two volumes. What now? Well, we need to subtract the volume of the cylinder from the volume of the right prism. So we get the volume of the prism with a hole as the volume of the right prism as a whole, which is x squared s minus the volume of the right cylinder, which is pi r squared s, which can be simplified as s, open bracket, x squared minus pi r squared, close bracket. So now we have a general formula for finding the volume of this prism. We can just substitute the real measurements into it when we get them. I hope that this has shown you that we do not need actual measurements to work out formulae. We could now use this formula to compare the volume of similar prisms with different dimensions. Thank you for joining us. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Introducing Measurement Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about measurement on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.